Hello and good morning. It's a pleasure to have you join me this Sunday from home. <laughs> because of um, the COVID restrictions in our province, um, our deacons have allowed me to decide if I might want to um, broadcast from home today. So um, I am broadcasting from home and I do hope that I'd be able to email this, uh, this clip to, um, to Dan Baxter. But if, if there's any problem, then I will, I will need to drive down to airdrop it. So whatever it is, good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Let's listen to the call to worship. Our call to worship comes from Psalm 29. It is entitled a Psalm of David. So David must have written Psalm 29. The beautiful thing about this Psalm is it is full of praise to God. All it does is praise God. And uh, the, the scene that is captured is that of a storm. Let's listen to the word of God. Give unto the Lord, O you mighty ones. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due to his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. Yes, the Lord splinters the cedars of Lebanon. He makes them also skip like a calf. Lebanon and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord divides the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple, everyone says glory. The Lord sat enthroned at the flood and the Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will give strength to his people. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this day with thanksgiving in our hearts. Father, we thank you because you are a mighty God and there is no one like you. Every day of our lives, we live at the pleasure of the King. Thank you, Lord, for the years that you've given us. Thank you for the health that you've given us. Thank you for the vitality that you've given us. Great is our Lord and greatly to be praised. So Father, no matter what we are going through, you deserve all the glory. So this day, we pause to glorify you and magnify you and extol your holy name. Father, we ask that Jesus will be enthroned in our hearts today. We also pray that the Holy Spirit's presence will be felt in everything that is done this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. Thank you, friends, for, um, for being here with me this morning. I have with me my dear husband, Casely, who will be reading the scriptures. So, just a moment. There's Casely. <laughs> Good morning, Casely. <laughs> Hello, good morning. <laughs> As uh, Pastor Sheila has uh, stated, I will be reading the scriptures. The first is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 3, starts from verse 15. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Messiah. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hands to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn. 
but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The next uh, is the, the next lesson is taken from uh, the Acts of the Apostles, from chapter eight, starting from verse fourteen. When the when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers there, that they might receive the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Casey. Beloved, you just heard the scripture reading and I want to to pass, first of all, to bring the prayers of the people to the Lord. And after that, I will certainly um, have a little um, reflection on, on the passages that um, Casely read. And um, I have to be mindful of the fact that this clip cannot go on for more than um, maybe 15, 17 minutes. So everything has got to be brief. Okay. Thank you, friends. Now let's pray. Our Lord and our God, you have asked that we should bring our petitions to you. You have asked, O oh Lord, that um, we should not doubt and that we should be bold and that we should approach your throne of grace and mercy in the time of need so that we might obtain strength. So God, I come before you in the name of Jesus. And I come to honour you because you've been so faithful to us. And Lord, to present before you your children who are in need of healing. Jesus, Master, I lift up Roger Hertel. I lift up Bill Zink and Dan Baxter. Holy Spirit, we thank you for what you've done. We thank you for your creative works. You've been wonderful. You are the one who right from the beginning did amazing things. And Jesus didn't do anything except that you were within him and you were all over him. So Spirit of God, I ask that you might supernaturally touch Roger, that you might touch Bill and touch Dan and heal them completely. Lord, we are awaiting a wonderful uh, bill of health from, from our brothers in Christ. And we thank you, Lord, that you will do it in Jesus' name. And Father, we commit before you this coming week. Lord, we ask that you'd be merciful to us, that you would continue to be our strength and our redeemer, and that Nothing that we need will, will be taken away from us. I thank you that your name is Jehovah Jireh and you are the God, our provider. You will provide all our needs according to your riches in glory. Lord, I thank you. And Father, I pause that your people might also bring their petitions before you in Jesus' name. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, 
The scripture reading that we have listened to today highlights the work of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity. We meet him for the very first time in Genesis chapter 1. In Genesis chapter 1, we see the Spirit of God hovering over the waters. You know, God spoke his word and we know that the word is our Lord Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. That is how John puts it. Moses in Genesis says, in the beginning, the Lord God created the heavens and the earth. And he goes on and he says that the earth was void and without form. And the Lord God said, let there be light. And there was light. And Genesis tells us that the spirit was hovering over the waters. So the Holy Spirit has always been the creator. He is, he is the one who executes the will of God. God, our Father, decrees and the Holy Spirit executes. So this is how we meet the Spirit in, in Genesis. Then we come into the Old Testament books and we notice the Spirit coming upon various men and women. These were the prophets. The Spirit would descend upon a person and empower that person to do deeds that he or she under normal circumstances would not be able to do. But after the spirit had finished using that individual, the spirit would lift and, and that individual would come back to being who he or she was. But then in the New Testament, our Lord tells us in John chapter 14, he tells us that he is going to send the Holy Spirit to us and that when the Spirit comes, he would remain with us and the Spirit would abide with us right to the very end. So whenever we think about the Holy Spirit as, as Christians in the house of God, let us understand that the Spirit lives in us. Without the Spirit living in us, there is really nothing there. Without the Spirit's presence, we have no power, we have no ability even to obey God. The Holy Spirit is the one who empowers us to do the will of God. The Spirit lives within us and he is going to be with us till the very end. And how do I know that? Come down to the book of Revelation, the very last book in the Bible. And it ends by telling us that the spirit and the bride say, come, come, Lord Jesus, even so, come. So the Holy Spirit who lives in the bride and the bride is the church of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit together with us is, is welcoming our Lord Jesus back on earth. So in the passages that we read, it's no wonder that John the Baptist, who had been sent to be the forerunner of Jesus, tells, tells his, um, his people, his following, that, listen, I am not the Christ. The Christ is coming. I'm not the Christ. And when he comes, I'm not even worthy to tie the, um, the almost like tie his shoelace. I'm not even worthy to do that. Why? Because he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And he says that Jesus is coming with his winnowing fork in his hands. And it's it, what, what is the, uh, the symbol of the winnowing fork? The symbol of the winnowing fork comes when we think about a harvest. After, after the threshing of the, of the wheat had taken place, then whatever was left over, you know, the, the farmer would use his winnowing fork, you know, to, to um, separate the, um, the, the unnecessary things, you know, the things that have got to be blown off somewhere from the real wheat. 
So the winnowing fork symbolizes judgment. The winnowing fork symbolizes a time when our Lord Jesus will come and separate the sheep from the goats. And how, how would one know that someone is a sheep? The sheep has the spirit, the Holy Spirit living within him. And that is how we would know who is for the Lord and who is not for the Lord. And then when we come to this, the, the passage in Acts, the passage in Acts tells us about converts in Samaria who had not as yet received the spirit. And these converts had to have the spirit come upon them. So the, the disciples or the apostles were sent down to Samaria to go and pray for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Friends, there is only one who had the Holy Spirit abiding in him in such a powerful way. It was our Lord Jesus Christ. And we know it because in, in, in the passage in Luke, it says that Jesus went to be baptized by John. And, and of course, John was, was surprised. Why are you coming to me to baptize you? You are the Lamb of God. And Jesus said, please go ahead and baptize me. And it says that when he came out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. As Christians, we must live a life that encourages the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can be grieved when we don't, we, first of all, we don't live in obedience to um, the word of God. It grieves the spirit. When our lifestyle is, is hateful, when we do things that are not glorifying to God, even after we have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, even after we have been baptized, some of us still live lives that do not glorify God. You know what? If, if you haven't received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit hasn't as yet come into you, if you haven't received this interesting and wonderful experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ask the Lord, ask him to baptize you with his Holy Spirit. In those days, the Spirit came as, as the elders laid hands on, on people and prayed for them. The laying on of hands brought the Spirit. Whatever it is in our lives today, let us understand that God is, is, is waiting for us. The Holy Spirit is, is more eager to come and live in people and the Holy Spirit is more eager to baptize us with strength and with fire to do the will of God than we are. We, 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 we are even ready to receive from him. Friends, if, if you feel in your heart that you are lacking the Spirit, then let us pray this prayer together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the work of the Spirit. We thank you that the Holy Spirit, who is God, the third person, abides in every Christian. Lord, we thank you that he has given us a deposit of eternal life by abiding in us. But Lord, we ask that the Spirit might baptize us with power, so that we might be able to stand firm in this generation, that we might be able to declare the glory of God to everyone, that we might be able to be those who show forth your majesty, not just in words, but in deeds. Come Holy Spirit. And for everybody who is listening today, baptize us afresh, fill us afresh, Holy Spirit, fill us to the brim.
Lord, we ask that you would forgive us. If there's anything which is stopping the flow of the spirit in our lives, then this day we denounce it in the name of Jesus. This day we come against anything which is not of you. God, forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us our sins, Lord. And we ask, oh, Heavenly Father, that you would come in a mighty way, Lord. And that, Father, you would baptize us afresh with your Holy Spirit. That, Lord, we will not just be those who talk about you, but we will be those who are actually men and women who are proclaiming and showing your salvation everywhere we go. In Jesus' majestic name I pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining me in my home today. And end I want to um, end today's little tiny broadcast, especially realizing that it can only go on for between 15, 17 minutes, and then it's too, it's, it, 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 it becomes too big a document, and, and then it cannot be uploaded. So friends, this is all that I can, I can say today. So receive the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace in Jesus' name. Go in peace, my friends, to love and serve the Lord. I have Casely here who will also say his farewell to you. So, Casely. <laughs> well, have a... Have a blessed rest of the Sunday. Excellent. Excellent. I concur. <laughs> Bye, friends. Bye-bye. <laughs>